Welcome to Mount Blue State Park in Weld, Maine. This is going to be home base for me for the next two nights. It is Friday night tonight. I'm going to spend Saturday driving around the Rangeley area. And then I'm going to come back here Saturday night. Now, this is the first time that I videoed camping in a state park. Usually I would go to someplace more secluded, more out of the middle of nowhere, where there's free camping. But let's face it, the world of dual sport motorcycle riding is full of compromises. You're constantly compromising on-road capability versus off-road capability, displacement and power versus weight and trail riding capabilities, the amount of gear that you bring versus your comfort at the campsite. And I could go on and on. As dual sport riders, we are constantly making compromises, and this campsite is a compromise for me. I've never camped somewhere so luxurious on the motorcycle because the motorcycles can take me to really remote places. But what you get with that is a certain amount of stress because you don't know where you're going to be camping necessarily. You don't know if there are going to be people there already. You don't know if you're going to find a spot at all or find a good enough spot that you actually want to stay the night. Here, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting a reserved campsite. I can leave all my stuff there during the day and I'm not worried about people going through it or stealing it or vandalizing it. There are outhouses. There are full shower facilities with running water and flushing toilets and there's pre-cut and pre-split firewood for sale you can even buy ice the compromise is quiet you have to deal with screaming kids barking dogs cars driving by your campsite people running generators throughout the day it's not the calm and quiet that I've found in other areas. But it is consistent. At a state park, you know what you're getting, no matter where you go. Even at a state park, you do get moments of quiet and solitude where you can just relax by the fire and forget where you are.
it was late on Friday before I got hungry. Uh, for dinners, I brought freeze-dried adventure meals. These are really good if you buy the right kind. The kind that I like are the chili mac with beef. These taste really good. All of the other ones I've tried are complete disgusting crap. And I would not buy any of them ever again. But the chili mac with beef, I would eat every night. So here we are, early Saturday morning. I left camp around 8 o'clock, and because I was able to leave my gear at the campsite, I was able to pack really light. Today I plan on doing ATV trails, and ATV trails are no fun on a big, heavy, loaded down bike. So with this new method of camping that I'm trying out. I get to leave all my gear at the campsite. I can pack the bike extremely light. I'm taking almost nothing with me. I'm leaving the panniers on just because I don't feel like taking them off, but there's nothing in them. And that's great. Not only for a nice light trail riding bike, but because on the way back to the campsite tonight, I can fill them up with beer.
here I am pulling into Phillips. This is probably the closest place to the park that I can get food and fuel and beer and whatever else I want. This is also where I'd like to get on the ATV trails. There is the Moose Loop, which goes through this area and travels all the way up to Rangeley and beyond. Uh, most of it up in the northern area is no motorcycles, so I don't plan on doing the whole loop. The whole loop is about 135 miles. I just want to do part of it just to get to Rangeley. I'm not really sure where the trail starts in this area, and I couldn't find it on the map, so I just decide to take the main road to Rangeley and see what I find. It just so happens that I come up behind some ATVers. These side-by-sides, I'm sure, are gonna take me to the trails. not sure if they're going to a home or to a camp or what they're doing so I don't want to just blindly follow them but I do happen to see as I'm passing by a trail sign so at that point I know they're on the trails I'm gonna turn around and follow them stop to check out the signs and they basically say active logging area yield to trucks be careful While I gave the ATVers a pretty good head start, I can still see their dust. I don't want to go too fast because I don't want to get stuck in the thick of it. I'm happy to let it disperse a little bit before I go through, but I can still tell they're ahead of me. Here, things get a little narrow. Time to get skinny.
even though I gave them a pretty good head start, I do catch up with the side-by-sides through this narrow section, and they just can't keep up the speed. Although, I think they do have the advantage over this particular obstacle, which is kind of like a balance beam to me on two wheels. And there's a nice little groove right in the middle of it, which I'm kind of worried about. But I end up keeping my speed up, keeping my balance, keeping my focus on where I want to go, not where I don't want to go, and making it through just fine. That was the last I saw of those side-by-sides. Uh, this section kind of opened up and they took off and I, I let them. I didn't want to be waiting for them all day. I just wanted to kind of relax, keep my speed low, have some fun, and not have to worry about them. keeping my speed low, I can tell from the dust, I'm still not very far away from the ATVs.
right after this bridge. Things get a little steep, a little rocky. I'm finding it hard to maintain speed and to maintain my line. And the bike's just kind of doing what it wants to do to get over the obstacle. And I'm kind of letting it. This goes on for quite a while. It doesn't look that bad in the video, but it was actually quite challenging.
here we're kind of coming to the end of the ATV trail. The trail continues down these dirt roads, but they're kind of main dirt roads that anyone can take. And they do dump out to a major highway. Here I see that the trail continues, but man, that is the steepest hill climb I have seen on any ATV trail that I have been on so far, and I don't even want to try it. I'm sitting here contemplating a little bit, I'm looking at where the main road is and wondering exactly where this ATV trail is going to take me, even if I do try it. I don't think it's going to take me where I want to go. So I continue on. So I'm thinking about lunch right now. I want to get to Rangeley. I'm about an hour away, but I just can't help and stop at some of these really scenic areas and just take in the view.